Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about the turnoff speed of this transistor. It's going to be used in a switching application where the Arduino turns it on and off. We'll measure the results with the Digilent Analog Discovery. This will be done in several stages. We'll start with this schematic here, where you see a 2N3904 transistor is controlling a 220 ohm load. It's being driven by the A7 pin of an Arduino Nano Every, and there's a base resistor of 2.2 K ohm. As a starting point, the transistor is deep into saturation and has a turn off speed of about 0.4 microseconds. In this case, the orange is the input waveform and the blue is that voltage measured at the collector of the transistor. As a point of reference, let's look at the turn on speed. Again, orange is the input and blue is the response. We can see that the transistor is much faster turning on than it is turning off. As we inspect this schematic, we can calculate the current on the base as 5 divided by 220 ohms, which is approximately 23 milliamps. We can also calculate the base current as 5, because we're sending 5 volts on the Arduino, minus 0 0.6 divided by 2.2K. It's approximately 2 milliamps. We can see that this transistor is operating in a forced beta condition, where beta is defined as the collector current over the base current of 23 milliamps divided by 2, which is about 11.5. This is important because we need enough base current to ensure that the transistor is saturated. Another way of saying that is the volts collector to emitter must be very low under all conditions to fully turn on this load. Here's a close-up of the circuit. You can see the Arduino Nano Every. Here's the line from the Arduino to the base resistor, the 2N3904 transistor, and the collector load is hiding back here. This is ground, channel one oscilloscope, channel two oscilloscope where channel one is right now connected to the Arduino itself, and channel two is connected to the collector of the transistor. This digital and analog discovery allows us to remember channels. So let's do that. Let's add a channel. We're gonna add channel two, and then we're gonna give it a name. We're gonna call this default. By default, this red line shows us the speed of the transistor. Remember that it was operating in a forced beta condition and it is very saturated, which makes it slow to turn off. One simple way to improve the performance is to add a resistor across the base emitter junction. In this example, the resistor is 10 kilo ohms and you can see that it does slightly improve the performance. Schematically, we take this resistor, let the value be 10 kilo ohms. We note that a small amount of current does flow down this path, but in relative terms, it's negligible. Let's remember this. So we'll save channel two and we'll call it with 10 K. One of the most effective ways to increase the speed is to add a Schottky diode from the base to the collector. In this case, we're using a BAT46. The oscilloscope shows a significant improvement. What was somewhere around 0.4 microseconds is now somewhere around 0.05 microseconds. However, did you notice that this voltage here is no longer at zero. Let's remove the diode so we can see the difference. So here's without. See the voltage is very close to zero. And now it's with. We see the voltage has jumped. So while the transistor is faster, 
the collector voltage or the voltage collector to emitter is no longer zero. Let's take a look at the schematic and see if we can make some sense of that. Here is that BAT46 diode. Let's go ahead and install it here. We remember that originally all of the current flowed to the base of the transistor. That doesn't happen anymore. Instead, some of that current will be diverted through the diode and then flow to ground, and some of the current will flow into the base. From transistor theory, we know that we need about 0.6 volts on the base in order for the transistor to conduct. This BAT46 diode has a forward voltage drop of about 0.3, which means the voltage on the collector cannot drop much below 0.3 volts. Think of this in terms of a feedback mechanism where we have two forces that work in opposition. For instance, suppose the base current increased. That would tend to turn the transistor on harder, which would lower the voltage collector to emitter, which would cause the diode to conduct or to steal more current, which would rob the base, effectively reducing the transistor conduction. And so we go round and round this loop, and in the end, our collector voltage ends up being somewhere around 0.3. So while it does turn off faster, our load does not see the same voltage. Instead of seeing an ideal 5, it now sees 4.7. Given the speed increase, that's probably not a bad deal. After all this work, we finally arrive at the end of the video. Instead of a transistor deep in saturation, we have a device that's held via that feedback mechanism at a point where the transistor is turned on, but not in saturation, which allows it to turn off very quickly.